So, you've been using OBS for a while and you're ready to take your skills to the next level. That's why you're checking out the OBS Super User Guidebook. Well, in this chapter, chapter one, we're gonna give you an update on the updates. That means we're gonna look at OBS and the past five updates to give you an idea of the game-changing features that are more recent to the platform. So real quick, before we get started, just want to remind everybody you can download the OBS Super User Guidebook in the links below. It's also available on Amazon if you'd like to have a paperback copy. And if you like this video or like this type of video, hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos because only 10% of our viewers are subscribed and it means a lot to us to have you guys on board. If we're doing something wrong, let us know in the comments below. You know, we would be happy to answer your questions about the content. Now, as you probably already know, OBS is totally open source. That means you can download it for free for Mac, PC, or Linux computers. The software has become incredibly popular because you can use an unlimited number of scenes and sources together to create dynamic video productions with a large variety of video transitions, recording, and streaming capabilities. Now, if we go back to the history of OBS, it was actually started in 2012, 2012. And at that time, OBS was a pretty basic tool for streaming and recording. Now we can fast forward to OBS 27 and start with the latest and greatest, but in this video, I'm gonna take you back to OBS 23, 24, 25, to give you those game-changing features that you should know about that are built in and free for you to use inside of OBS. Now on top of all of that, OBS gives you the ability to live stream to almost any destination that you'd like. You can authenticate directly into YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, etc., but you can also use a custom RTMP string that could work with pretty much any live streaming destination. So that's pretty good, but we'll also learn about plugins that will allow you to live stream to multiple locations at the same time. You'll also learn about IP video outputs with NDI and others, where you can send the video from OBS directly to sources on your local area network or anywhere in the world. A really important feature of OBS is the audio mixer. You can bring in an unlimited amount of audio sources and there's a variety of ways to do that. Once those audio sources are inside of OBS, you can create a custom mix for yourself to live stream and record with. You can have a separate audio monitoring option. You can record up to six different audio tracks and you can use new plugins. Again, we're gonna uh, talk about plugins for a variety of different features. On the audio side, there's a new plugin called Audio Monitor we'll talk about in future course, where you can actually send the audio to any application, including stuff like Zoom, Skype, GoToMeeting, or Microsoft Teams. Now, regarding OBS and all the scenes and sources, you have the ability to apply a filter. A filter is either an audio or a video effect that can be added to increase the functionality of what you're doing. For example, there's a filter to remove a background from your video so that you can replace it with a virtual set. And we'll look at that in this upcoming course. For example, there are audio filters to increase your the sound of your voice to make it sound better and remove the background noises. There's so many great filters. We're gonna go over all of the included filters with OBS, but then we'll go into the extra special features available via plugins. Okay, so all the way back in OBS 23, we got support for NVIDIA graphics cards and the NVENC encoding. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're gonna love this feature because OBS can take full capabilities of the graphics processing unit you have to improve video performance. We also got in some new audio filters, an audio limiter and expander that we'll cover in more detail in an upcoming chapter. These can be applied to any audio source to make them sound better. We also got a LumaKey filter, which gave us some additional capabilities 
of choosing specific colors to remove from a background to make transparent, which is great for the use with green screens and virtual sets. Now in OBS 24, one of my favorite features was dynamic bit rates. It is great for increasing the quality of your live streams, especially if bandwidth or network congestion is an issue for you. We posted a video about this as a way to reduce dropped frames. And so many people on YouTube told us that this was a big deal and it really helped. We also got custom docs and custom docs allow you to bring websites into your OBS dashboard. You type in a website or a local HTML file on your computer and you can dock it onto your OBS interface. This allows you to bring in chat rooms, but also all kinds of different controllers for devices that are connected on your network. In version 25, we got SRT output. It's a highly advanced, secure, reliable transport system that can send video across the world. We'll talk about that in a later course. And we got scene collections. Now scene collections was a big one for everybody. It essentially allows you to save an entire OBS project with all the scenes and all the sources and start fresh with all new scenes and all new sources. And that way you can toggle between multiple different projects, load them up quickly. It's hard to imagine OBS without it, but it is a great new feature and you should be using it. The T-Bar came out in 25, which was the ability to switch between preview and output in studio mode with a beautiful cross transition that we'll look at later. We got the volume lock, the ability to lock the volume once you've got your mix just right in OBS. And we got source icons, just the icons that are in OBS that look so much better for people new to the platform to get started. Now in version 26, a huge feature was virtual camera support inside of OBS, which allows you to send the video from OBS directly to Skype, directly to software like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, just via a virtual webcam driver. Huge feature here. We also got a source toolbar, which allows you to control your sources a little bit easier. It pops up right above media and allows you to pause and play that media. We got a new audio filter for noise suppression. It's based on AI and it's actually got a lot of great reviews. We got the ability to quickly create screenshots inside of OBS via hotkey. And we also got a movable UI, which allows us to pull out pieces of the UI different windows to rearrange it and i've seen a lot of creativity with this and then of course obs 27 added undo and redo so if you accidentally delete something or move something it's saved for you and you can go back and forth browser docs were already included for windows users and it finally got added for mac and pc we got source visibility transitions this is one of my favorite new ones it allows you to choose a source and set a specific transition in and out based on visibility. And the visibility is a thing that you can toggle on and off for any source. And now they can kind of beautifully transition in and out of your OBS scenes. We also got track mats for stingers and then completely movable UI. So great feature updates so far leading up to OBS. And now we have finally just the key takeaways for OBS. It's highly flexible video production software. And what makes it so great is this large community of developers that help push the project forward. All right, well, you are all caught up on OBS. You've been schooled. Now you know how OBS kind of works. Every year or so, there's a new release with a long list of features. I did not cover them all, but you can see how it's becoming more and more powerful each year. So if you start learning about OBS, become part of the community, check out the forums and follow OBS Project online so you can stay up to date with the latest features that are coming out all the time.